In four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, wait a minute, hold on a second, let me, I hit the button, I hit, I have a button here that allows me to fade back and forth and it wasn't, it wasn't working, I, there, now it works, see, okay, there you go, see, it works, it works when I want it to work, uh, hello everybody, how are you, how are you this evening, uh, look who's here. <laughs> that's really that's really splendid of you. She's here. She's here. She's. And it's Friday. Yep, yeah, it is Friday. And we have a three day weekend. Yeah. Uh, yep, you have, yep, yep. Oh, you have another three day weekend. You always have a three day it's weekend. It's President's Day. It's President's Day. I see. Okay. Anyway. So there. So there. Uh, so how are you? I'm okay. In case you you've never watched this program before, this is my. Alleged wife. Alleged. I say alleged because uh, we do none of the things that normal married couples do. Like True. Like last night, <laughs> we didn't sleep in the same bed together for two nights in a row. <laughs> Mainly because I need to, it's better for my knee if I That's sleep in the other bed. That's fine with me. I mean, I'm not complaining. Why are you not complaining? I'm not complaining because you don't wake me up that way. Well, you, I, you don't, I, the other night I was going to uh, sleep in the bed. Uh, as I have been doing a lot lately, I mean, I've been sleeping with you most nights. And I went over and I went into the room and you were snoring so badly <laughs> that I said to myself, no fucking way am I going to get myself into this. Listen, it you never know? woke me up. Huh? But your snoring used to wake me up. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not anymore. That's true. I don't snore anymore. When I lost all that weight, once I stopped snoring. Once in a while, snoring. once in a blue moon. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, then everybody snores occasionally. Well, I wear yeah. bite plates, so that's my excuse. Really? Yeah. I'm in my full communist garb tonight. I see. Here's, the, uh, here's Mao Say Obama. <laughs> uh, and and uh, here's my red army hat, which I love this hat. I just love it. We have to go back to China so I can buy more. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, you go to China every year. Just we, bring me back one. We have the dates of our new um, annual meeting, but I hope it's not in Hong Kong. <laughs> you hope it's not in Hong Kong? Um, yeah, I want to go back to Shanghai or, you know, I've only been to Shanghai once. Yeah. I want to go yeah. back there. I want to see yeah. more of it. I, I loved it in Beijing. I mean, Beijing is a great city. It's one of the world's great cities. It's huge. But so Shanghai, right? Shanghai is kind of like New York City. Yeah. Beijing's like... Just... New York Washington. City on steroids. It's like Washington D.C. It's it More is like Washington, yeah. It, it it has kind of a governmenty governmenty kind of, yeah. feeling to it. Shanghai yeah. is more artsy and and yeah and fartsy and, and fartsy and fartsy. And then you went to you go to Hong Kong too. Yeah. Now that's supposedly wonderful. It's gorgeous. But it's warm there, isn't it? It's an island. Yeah. It's it's. I think if you draw a line, it's either near or on the equator. I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, it doesn't matter that, that I complain about our little relationship because we don't have one this week or next week because the, all you do is sit there and watch the goddamn Olympics. I don't care. The ice skating is phenomenal. It's, it's great. I love yeah, it. Yeah, but, but, but I don't, you don't even, you sh all, all, every time I go in and I say something to her, she goes, shh. Like, you know, it, you can't just watch it. She can't talk to me for two weeks. She's like gone into this cocoon. Well, it's, it keeps me from dealing with what's happening in this country. It, 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 you don't care what's happening in this country. I do. Country. It's going to shit. Well, what do you care? Oh, I, I, it's true. I'll, I'll it's be not, long gone by the time it really... Erupts. It's not going to affect us, is it? Yeah, wait until he starts cutting Medicare and, and, and Social Security. One point three one point three one point three trillion he has to recap because of all the cuts that he gave his friends. Do you know what, what how much did I hear he got as a tax break? Eleven eleven million dollars. He got eleven million dollars in this tax break. Yeah. I got nothing. I it, me neither. <laughs> why doesn't he why, why does he say, Well, I got eleven million, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna 
Give I'm it gonna back. donate I'm it. I'm gonna donate it. I'm gonna give it back. Stop it. What? What? I'm picking my finger. Stop it. It annoys me. I know it does. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> look, look at her. She is just all oh, this this is what a marriage this is. Don't pick your don't pick your fingers and don't don't do this and don't do that. I live a life of in fear, ladies and gentlemen. You mean the rubber glue on the side of your bed? What? The rubber glue on the side of your bed. What do you mean the rubber glue on the side of my bed? All the spongy. Oh yeah, she. See, see I. Uh, I pick my nose. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I mean, no, wait, really, we have to talk about Wait a minute. No, I'm going to talk about this because I've done it since I was a kid. So? And, and I, and do I, you eat it too? No, 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 no. <laughs> well. No, but I, I've done it ever since I was a kid. And in fact, I was supposed to be, when I was in, in grade school, I was supposed to be on a radio show of quiz questions for smart kids and I was kind of a smart kid so they were going to put me on it but then they decided not to because I picked my nose oh my god yeah actually picking my nose got me uh banned from the first radio thing I was ever going to do I got in trouble for biting for chewing on my pencils really you know, my report card she wrote and please talk to her about chewing the pencils well I used to bite my nails <laughs> but I don't anymore because my teeth are more sensitive so I don't bite my nails but I do bite my fingers I used to bite my nails. And I picked my nose. Ugh. That's why I said the rubber glue on the huh? side of your bed. Well, they, yeah, she's, what she's saying is that all the snot bugger booze that I, that I have. Flip over. Flip over onto the side of the bed and, uh, you know. It's spongy. It gets spongy. Yeah, you know, I use it as a trampoline. I don't even walk there. You don't really? No. no? Oh, okay. Because you don't know that I actually flick them over to your side of the bed Stop while you're asleep. You're disgusting. In fact, the other night when you were really dead asleep, I actually got a big one and rubbed it off on your on on your back. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So just think about that when you're trying to go to sleep tonight. Yeah. So anyway. So uh how's work? Hard. I don't know why. It's been very difficult the last, um, since Christmas. Really? Why? Yeah. Just I don't know. I, it took me all January to make up for December because I was sick. And I'm just loaded down now in February. I don't know. Yeah, but you also you also took off every Friday. Every other Friday. Every other, well, for, no, uh, during, before Christmas. I was Friday. sick. Yeah, but you, no, but before you were sick. You, the one week after New, after Thanksgiving, I took off. I wasn't sick then. Yeah. The one Friday after Thanksgiving, not the first, yeah. not the day. But, after. but your intention, and I did the same thing, is that it's the end of the year and you got to use up your days. Yeah, use it or lose so, it. So you may as well take Fridays off. And a lot of people do this. Yeah, thing. I do it. I That's did that over at Sirius. I had four weeks a year. Maybe I used two weeks for a vacation. So I had two weeks. It took uh, two months. What? Two weeks would be 14 days. I could actually take like two months, at least a month off without without friday well i'm taking every other friday off to kind of like spread didn't, it out didn't i take mondays and fridays off i don't I remember so. yeah um because it was a, a and the guy taught person taught me to do that was albert yeah because albert didn't want to have to work when albert he is in to. florida by the way he is living in florida i think they they're living at, at the the house that his mother had oh, really how do you because i see pictures of her in the beach all the time no they may have kept their apartment up well, here. Well, maybe she know. left him for the beach. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're in both places, but you really should contact him. Well, I, I wrote him on his Facebook page. No, they don't write on Facebook page. Just send him a fucking email. Well, no, I sent him a message. Send Facebook. him an email. Oh, can't send him an email. Not see, see how she, she, I, 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 she's so bossy. You're so nose picky and hand picky. But you're bossy. Well, somebody's got to be the you're boss bossy, in this family. You know, I mean, you just you just get bossy. <laughs> moo, <laughs> moo, <laughs> moo, <laughs> bossy. <laughs> anyway, so, um, um, so what do you what is so you're you've been depressed about the government. Very depressed. Today, I mean, like yeah. I'm stop. I'm 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 sick and tired of all this fucking thoughts and prayers, and uh, you know, get a license, get some training, get insurance, and then you can have a gun I, and outlaw the goddamn assault rifles. I say first of all, you can't use a gun unless you have insurance. Insurance and take a test, just like a car. Yeah. 
you know, and then and 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 then yeah, you have insurance and. And, then and Brent, assault and, life rifles should be outlawed in this country totally. Well, there's no reason for them. Right, except to kill. What? What? You you thinking you're going to carry an assault rifle around with you to protect yourself? <laughs> you know, you know, you're going to carry a, a small gun that's in. You know, you can hide on your person. I'm just sick of it. I'm yeah. sick of it. I'm sick of Trump. Well, no, what I'm sick of. Here's what I'm sick of: is every time this happens, everybody goes crazy. My thoughts are prayers, and it's not that the, the, the Congress will say, "Well, it's not. It's it's too early to talk about it." Uh, and, and then they go into the mental health. They don't even yeah. talk about guns. Yeah, it, it was his fault because he was mentally ill. ill. Well, but he was mentally ill and was able to buy a gun, an assault rifle. An assault rifle, assault rifle in this case. He had an <laughs> yeah. also had a gun. Remember, yeah. we saw that video. Yeah, but he had ago. lots of... <laughs> his mother dies. His father is dead, and his mother dies, and he goes to live with friends, and they allowed him to bring in his assault rifle because it was one of his properties. Yeah, it was his property. <laughs> his property. They allowed him to bring it into the Sure, home. bring in that... Bring in that... AK-47. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, um, they're going to now blame the FBI for the whole thing because the FBI had gotten about 30 reports about this guy. Yeah. People were really worried yeah. that he was going to do something and the FBI didn't do anything about it. Well, they'd started to do it, but they never followed up on it. Well, and what do you do when somebody says they're going to do something? He's not doing it yet. He's not, you know, it's kind of like once I said, somebody threatened to kill me. They said, well, when he tries, let us know. Yeah. You know, that just because he threatened is not a crime uh and uh, it was uh, it was just you know i mean it's horrible. i'm just sick of it and, and if you hear the the um the the numbers of of whether it's a concert whether it's a movie theater whether it's a school it just goes on and on and on yeah, and but, then you have all these yeah, copycats I'm, yeah but what i'm sick of is like for instance our president oh god Jesus uh, I mean, he give, gives a speech in the whole thing. Doesn't even mention guns. He doesn't mention the word gun. Right. Doesn't mention the word gun. It was If he said it, he'd probably go, g -g 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 gun. You know, I mean, no gun. And then, to, oh, today the best thing is, see, this is this is what our president does. Did he stop in? in uh... No, what happened was, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pence? No, the guy who's investigating him. Uh, Mueller. Mueller. His, uh, his group. Uh, finally indicted some Russians. 16 Russians, yeah. I think it is. Uh, one of them is a company and the rest are people. They, they're never going to be able to arrest them because they're not here. They're, oh. in, they're in Russia and, you know, Putin's not going to extradite them, right? But they, they charge them with, you know, helping to rig the election. Immediately, Trump puts out a tweet yeah. saying, saying, See, I told See, you so. I, I told you uh, there's, no, there's no conspiracy here. You know, uh, this proves it. No, this doesn't prove anything. All this proves is that a bunch of Russians did this. Now, the question is, how complicit were you in it? But he's writing these things saying, oh, see, now I'm cleared. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not off the hook yet. <laughs> this is the beginning, because this is Mueller starting the ball rolling on what is a whole scenario that probably he's starting to see. Yeah. So, you know, he, he oh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't do nothing. You know, I'm clean. So uh, that's what happens. So, um, uh, and also, uh, let's see here. Uh, Je Jeffrey Tambor is off of Transparent. I heard. Because. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Well, Amazon did a three-month investigation and decided to fire him. You know. Uh, hmm. It ran its course, as the Transparent. Oh, I, I got tired of it after the first season. No, I liked the second season too. Was there a third? Huh? Was there a third? I think season? there was a. Th maybe there was a third season. I don't know. Anyway, I liked it, but it was enough. Well. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, we're he's not going to work again, you know, um, and it's all because some people see. I don't think he was well liked by the crew. Okay, he was probably like a prima donna, and he was an asshole and all that. And so this whole Me Too thing comes along, and they figure some reason to get rid of him, and they do. Well, they use it as an excuse. You know, we were talking today, I and um, Michael Snyder, about, uh, what's his name, over at uh, Pixar, 
Uh, oh God, what's his name now? See, I'm I'm too tired tonight and I can't remember names. Anyway, but, but he was the head of Pixar and then he became the head of Disney Animation, uh, and he, they let him go, you know, or no. they or they they pushed him aside because there were complaints that he was too touchy feely. Jesus. Now what what it was with this guy? In fact, I could find his name because I have Monsters Inc. here. Put Auto his arm around no, somebody. No, autographed by him. But put his arm around. Stop yeah. it! You don't have to look. For, well, put his I'm arm around his some. Name. It doesn't matter. Put his arm around. Her. I mean, was that he touchy feeling? He was. You know how there's some people who just put their who, arm who, around just, or yeah, touch they, their they, arm. They, they come over to see you. They put their arm around you and they go, "Hi, nice to see yeah. you." You know that kind of thing. And supposedly that was what he was really guilty of. Is that really like what what um, some of the other yeah, it, wasn't, it, open, was, it wasn't open your bathrobe and watch It wasn't like he put off. his arm around you and then started humping your leg like or Harvey. anything like that. <laughs> but it looks like he's going to be out for good at Disney. And I I don't know, you know. I mean, I, 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 I did I ever meet the guy? I don't know if I met him or not. But everybody who ever worked with him said he was just a swell guy. You know, he was really terrific. Um, and uh, uh, rumor has it that since he's gone, uh, the whole Disney animation and Pixar have kind of, you know, Full are not being run by HR, you know, <laughs> uh, and it's just not the company it once was. Wow, that's and if you sad. Look at, if you look at the pictures they're doing, it's not the company it once was. Wow. You know. I'll remember his name after the show's it's over. It's always like that. We're at three in the morning. John Lasseter. Yes. John Lasseter. And so, I mean, a, a guy who has, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, just, I just think that this whole thing about People who like they, maybe they touch you, maybe they come over and they, you know, touchy feely. That's people. not sexual harassment, and it's not you know jerking off, and it's not forcing you know rape. Right. And there's, right. there and, is a difference. And he wasn't accused of any of those things. He was accused of being very touchy and feely with people. They were just looking for an excuse to get rid of him. No, they weren't yeah. looking for an excuse. I. I I don't know. These are these are some big people in these companies. Now maybe they get Disney probably could get rid of them because Disney is so big now that they don't they're not dependent on any one person for their income. And of course, the thing is they fire him or they let him go. They haven't let him go yet. It hasn't been announced, but he has not been going to work. And he's been at home. And, he's using up his leave. You, you, you know, spending whatever. time with his family. But the rumor is, let's say they get rid of him. It's not really the worst thing in the world because he still has all that Pixar stock and money because he was one of the guys that was Steve Jobs. Well, he started Pixar with Lucas, and then Lucas sold Pixar to, to, jo Steve, to, to Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. And now, do you know who the uh, the number one? Uh, uh, Stock uh, holder holder in Disney is Jobs' wife. Yep, yep. She owns I don't know how much percentage. Big chunk. I mean, she she's fucking gazillionaire, you know. Um, but I'm sure that Lasseter has a lot of stock, and so they get rid of him. So he's still got a lot of money. He's never going to starve another day in his life. And he did something, you know. Uh, let, let's praise John Lasseter while we can. This is the guy who changed the whole way cartoons are done in this country. In what way? Uh, Toy Story. He, he and Pixar Animation invented computer animation. Ah. And developed it to the art that it is. You know, when they came out with Toy Story, it, was, it, it didn't stop to think that this was a computer that did it. It a, was a fully articulated story with Gosh. fully articulated characters. It was wonderful. And as time it went on with, uh, with uh, uh, Pixar, uh, the pictures just got better and better, and the animation became richer. They just did a thing called Coco. Which we haven't seen. Which we haven't seen yet. Which uh, Coco, the animation, is just superb. Just superb. And it's gotten to the point where, you know, I used to love animated films hand-drawn animated films. And I look at them now and I go, you know, they were really kind of ancient. Now. You know, because what they can do now, they, they've taken, rather than just have a computer do the animation, they created a whole art behind the animation. Mm -hmm. And so some of these things are very artful and you don't stop to think that it isn't a cartoon. And there's a lot of depth to it, too. Well, it's 3D. Yeah. 
Well, that's true. Well, because it, it, all of them are three D. Because they that's the, when you're making the modeling and everything. It's it, it is three D. So you know, I'm too tired to do the show tonight. You want to do it? No, I'll, I'll just go to sleep. No, nope, it's can, seven. It's ten twenty five. This coffee doesn't seem to be. Should doing I it roll for over? Me. Not yet. The, this coffee isn't doing it for me. No, I haven't had coffee in in mm. eight days. Tell them about this. I, I don't I was want to tell no, anybody. No, no. It's, Wait a minute. I was trying to explain it last night. And all I could think of was, is that there are only two things you can eat, air and dirt. No, I can eat fish, vegetables, fruit, meat, you know, and, and chicken. But I, I, can't, I can eat salad, but no dressing. Who, who, what are you, a rabbit? I can eat, I can eat well, what I've been doing is oil and lemon. Which isn't so bad. Oil and lemon is is barely passable. Yeah, and then you put a lot of hot, a lot of spices in it. But you can't do coffee. Can't this do is coffee. All, and this is all because you have allergies. A major allergy, which a, is a major allergy. Yeah. Uh, uh, an allergy that uh, that uh, is overwhelming. How bad is it? Bad. I mean, you you always sit here and go, oh, I'm itching, I'm itching, I'm itching. But I, 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 I never can quite ascertain how bad it really is, you know. Well, it's like an so. internal itch, you know what I mean? It's like you're itching from the inside out. Yeah. yeah. It's different than a bite. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's like from the inside and out. And so then she you has can't to, get rid of it. You have to shoot up. Yeah, I give myself shots. You, and, and you went to shoot up lessons, didn't you? I did, about a year. <laughs> they taught you how to shoot up. Yeah. And now it's very simple for you, right? Well, the needle is so tiny that once it touches the skin, it's in. Really? Yeah, it takes two and seconds. It doesn't sting or anything. No. Wow. Yeah. Well, you could. Uh, you then you're you're kind of on your way to being uh, a heroin addict. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm all, ready. You, all you need is the spoon and the and the and the. And all the I all heroin. I need is for Trump to take away my uh, my uh, entitlements, quote unquote. Well, see, I'm. I said this last night, and I've said this before. Do not fuck with our Medicare. We're old people. That's we right. have we have nothing to lose. lose. Right? Put a a a, a vest. You know, with we, bombs we, we, on find, it? we find a bunch of us who have uh, like a terminal cancer, only going to live like three months, something like pancreatic cancer, and just and, do it. And say, here, here's the vest. Just go down and blow yourself up. Just you know, go into Congress. We have nothing to lose, Paul Ryan. <laughs> so you know, we have nothing to lose. So Mitch don't fu don't fuck with old people, or we're gonna fuck with you. We're gonna fuck you up good, right? I just hope people come out and vote. The reason why, yeah, Democrats do so bad is because people stop. Yeah, it's the one beautiful thing that we have in this country. We can vote. No, the one beautiful thing we have in this country is our SAG after insurance. Boy, ain't that the truth? Boy. What's funny about this insurance is. And we couldn't believe this. We thought there was something wrong. And she even had to reiterate to them today when she was talking to them and ask them, if it's for just me alone, it's $535 a quarter, which is very cheap for you know supplemental insurance. You'd pay more if you had like ARP or something like that. For the two of us, it's two five hundred and thirty four dollars. It's the same amount for I, two I, of us. And I, she said to you said to them, and I said I don't understand it. I said, will I be covered? <laughs> she said, no, it's for the two of you. That's she said, that's a great. She said it's a great policy. She said, welcome aboard. But did you notice it also said if you had dependents like kids or whatever, it's still five hundred and thirty four dollars. Well, she said, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just hope that you know that it's it's everything it's supposed to be. But I've heard that our union has good good medical care. Well, you know, you something you talked about it. You complained about it. And now you can. Now I can roll you over. You can roll over. Here she comes. Watch her go from one frame to the other. Move Here, watch feet. this. As she leaves that frame, Yay. she's coming to this frame. Here okay. She is. And then we just go like that. Yay. Okay. And uh, move over a little bit I'm here. here. Yeah, I'm going to open up the lines here. Good idea. So, so that people can call. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, we're on. Let me let me also get rid of some things here. I got to get rid of that because I get all have all these people and uh, I want to get rid of them. There we go. There we go. We're almost taking care of that. No, I'm doing things here, folks, that I have to do. Okay, so the lines are ready for Please people to call. call. This girl is tired. She wants to go. 
to sleep. To, to, well, you can go to sleep, and I can just sit here and and, okay. and wait for the calls to come. No, I'm 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 being good. I'm what do you mean you're being good? You nobody said you had to stay around. You sure? I, I'm sure. You mean it? You mean it? Yeah, I, I'm I mean it. I can I can sit here and and just wait for people to call. We're By not. the way, our lines are open in case you want to know. By the way, isn't that look at that? See that, that a lot of people whenever you're on. Uh. A lot of people. Oh. <laughs> Here comes Rob Alfano. I like Rob Alfano. Well, of course, we, hey, we all I like love his we, we we like Rob Hello. Alfano. There he is. How's it going? You look great. How's it going with you? Good. Very good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Like Three day weekend coming yes, up. Yes. You too. Yeah. 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 By the way, we're, we're gonna get the, the, you, you guys are going to get snow. We're going to get uh, one to three here. We're supposed to get four to seven inches. And hey, it's man, gonna I got to start... wait for both of these people's pictures to pop in. Uh, there's Vernon Nunn. Uh, turn your camera on and off again. He's on. Rob. Oh, Rob. Rob, because uh, you got a little bit shut out by the next caller. Are you there, Rob? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Now, he's, now he's going to do it again. And oh. there you go. Okay. There we now go. we're fine. Hello. Four to, se four to seven inches, and it's supposed to start tomorrow and snow till Sunday morning. Four to seven inches. But the the streets are warm, so it's not going to last. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's not. Okay. And then it's going to go up to. My brother was telling me it's going to go up to the fifties there on Monday or Tuesday. So. It yeah. was It'll 60 today. You know, Monday I mean, we have to have lunch weather. with my with my business Thursday, manager. We, Thursday we had 75 degrees here. Get out of here. So I was outside sitting down smoking a cigar, and then all of a sudden we had a downpour here that was just torrential. And about 30 minutes, and then it was gone. It and was where, like a summer day with, where the, are you? with the rain. And the, what's that? Where do you live? In uh, Virginia. I live where? in the Shenandoah Valley. I used to live in Old Town Alexandria. Talking to the mic. I used to live yeah. in Old Town Alexandria. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's uh, near DC. I'm about 90 minutes. I'm in the mountains. Now we're okay. in, yeah. So you're in west. Shenandoah. You're where, west. Where are you, Vernon? You're west. Right. Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, oh, Kentucky. Boy. How's the weather there? Uh, just about the same as what Rob was talking about. Uh, two days ago, it was 71. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it's it? Cra it's a crazy winter. It's crazy. And, look and everybody is oh. sick. Look who else is calling. Mark, um, Mark Thorner. Handsome guy there. Yeah, handsome Mark Thorner. He is. Yeah. He either looks handsome or like Lex Luthor. One or the other. I can't figure oh, out which. Geez. Huh? Well, Lex Luthor wasn't a bad looking guy. He just had a bald head like you do. Who's so. Lex Luthor? L Luther. Lex, Lex Luthor. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Hi, Renee. Renee. Hi. Yeah. No, uh, Lex Luthor hey. is, uh, is Superman's nemesis. Rex Rooster? Lex Luther. Rex Rooster. Uh, 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 Renee. Renee, let's see it's your whole Lex face. Lex Luthor. Try to, Lex Luthor. Try to move your camera a little bit so that we can see your whole face. I'm going to take you outside in a minute or two. Oh, okay. And I'm going to sleep. Good night, Marjorie. Good night. Uh, Good, night. Mm. Good night, guys. She gets to go to sleep. I have to stay up with these friends of mine <laughs> and hang out. And uh, what, whatever. Let me see here. Let me. Ah. Yeah, it's a Phil Free Friday. It's a, an, a Phil Free Friday. Yeah, it was a, a Thursday Free Friday. And a free Free Thursday. Free, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, it was. Uh, it's been okay. It's been fine. By the way, um, so uh, what do you guys? What do you guys think about the fact that our dear president? <laughs> Sends out a tweet today after they say that they're indicting 16 people for uh, campaign, uh, 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 trying to fix the ca campaign, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they're going to, uh, you know, uh, they're gonna, they've indicted them. This is Mueller's people. And he yeah. puts out a thing saying, see, I'm not guilty of anything. And that's not what it was all about. What? It doesn't prove what he's guilty or not guilty of. It, it just, I don't understand his correlation. It, because he he's trying to say, hey, look, you know, this. Oh, look at that sunset. Uh, it, it, he's just saying, look, we're uh, we're 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 really fine with this thing. We're we are not guilty of anything. Yes, you are, you motherfucker. And they're just setting it up. You know. Uh, we don't know what he's guilty of. We'll find out. Yeah. And uh, the other big piece of news it's, today, it's what? Sad about the FBI. That's what I was going to say. Ball. It's it, sad about that because it, it just, again, it degrades their credibility. Well, they were in there in the middle of this whole, hello, Jeff. They're in the middle of this whole yeah. thing with Trump 
with Trump saying how corrupt and horrible they are. And then yeah. this happens. Mm -hmm. In case people don't know what we're talking about, the FBI, it turns out, got about 30 warnings that this guy was going to go shoot somebody, you know, and they didn't do anything about it. Or if they did something about it, they hadn't made enough of a case that they felt they could a activate it, right? One of the uh, shooter's acquaintances uh, mm -hmm. called the tip line, the federal, the FBI tip line on, on January 5th yeah. and left, left a message saying that um, – he was, you know, nervous about this guy, and he said that uh, he was going to shoot up schools and stuff like that, and it just fell through the cracks. Yeah. And that's well, bad. Well, I get really sick uh, of, of every time this happens. You know, you said it best last night, Rob. You said it's getting to the point where I just don't care because nothing's ever going to be done about it. So why should I complain about it when I know that nothing's going to happen? And the fact is we're, we are now so used to the fact that oh that's beautiful uh uh it, the fact that you know this has become a fact of life this has been a this is a part of our environment now and when it happens we know exactly what's going to happen the democrats are going to yell and scream about arms reform and the republicans are going to say oh no it's we get it's a he's a crazy person <laughs> we got to do something about crazy people and uh, they'll argue back and forth for about a week and a half till all the bodies are buried. And then it's back to business as usual until the next tragedy happens. There's not enough wind in the sail to carry it. There's not enough. You know what I mean? What does it, it take, it, though? I mean, it, you would have thought that how many how many children were killed in, uh, in Connecticut or Rhode Island, rather? Was it Rhode Island, Connecticut? New, New, Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. Connecticut, a new uh, it, yeah. what is it called? New Newtown. 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 New, I mean. That you would have thought would have been enough for people to say, that's it. We got to do yeah. something about this. But no, even little kids. No, doesn't. You know. it, it's not ringing. Even you got Marco Rubio down there. You got a you got a Republican governor. Yeah. And they're yeah. screaming. They're screaming. Marco Rubio says that if if you if you had tougher gun laws, this guy bought this weapon legally that wouldn't do anything. That's his, you know, response, and and of course the rest of the, the a gun that wouldn't do anything. Thing, yeah, uh, they, he got it through legal. Uh, you know, he 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 went through his legal uh, way to get this gun, which would which is what you're when you talk about a gun law, you're yeah. trying to say, uh, you know, you're you're putting in pr procedures for people to get these weapons, right? Right. So, Right. This guy got it. He didn't he didn't get it from a, under, a, you know, the back, uh, the trunk of a car somewhere. Right. We're being joined, by the way, by Bob Eberth. Let me ask uh, Mark, because, Mark, you're in Florida. You know, uh, and what, what town again? I, mean, I keep forgetting. I'm in Naples. Naples. I should remember it because then I say nipples and we all laugh, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. All I know is that I, I I have a bunch of lame ducks in the elected government down here as well, and they're just not doing by the right thing. They can they can scream rhetoric and law all they want; it's not doing what it should be doing. Yeah. And what Rob said, unfortunately, is you know that's unfortunately going to become the norm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you hate to sound callous. It's not that you don't feel for the families and everybody, but you can't. It's not uh, if if you're not going to do anything to solve it, then it becomes uh, like this morning. I had a I had a two and a half hour drive, and I always listen to CNN, but I couldn't because it was you just can't. It's it's the thoughts and prayers. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Everybody they bring on, it's thoughts and prayers, thoughts, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. And then everybody says, maybe this time something will happen. Maybe this time everybody's talking about this now. Maybe this time. Yeah. And the next guest comes on and it's thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. And it's it's the same thing. It's, you know, and coming up next. Well, touch heart wrenching story from this girl who blah, blah, blah. that's not news to me. I don't know what the purpose of that is. It's uh, 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 What they're doing, you know, you, you know, I hate to be down on the news people because really we got to protect them because they're uh, being assailed. Yeah. But the fact is they use a tragedy like this, 
you know, it's like thoughts and prayers. Isn't it terrible what happened? We'll be back in a moment after these two yeah. minutes out for commercials. Yes. And it's all and about it, selling commercial eats. time. Yes, Bob. Uh, yeah, yeah, my mic's on. Uh, Florida, right the day after the shooting, we're going to pass a bill. And tucked in that bill in the small print, about 90 pages in, was a uh, thing where when someone applied for a carry permit, if their uh, background check didn't come back in within 90 days, they would just automatically get the permit. What the f really? Yeah. And they were going to vote on it the day after the shooting. Did they vote on it the day after the shooting? Uh, I don't think so, because I think one of the Democrats there just made a big stink on it. Yeah. Now, you know, uh, Trump, his memory fails him, but he forgets that he passed an executive order or something like that that allowed mentally incapable people of buying guns. They're refusing to uh, release the photographs because they've been asking for the photos of the, that. Of him signing. Signing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he, what was it? Does anybody know exactly what, what he signed that made it possible for a guy like this guy to go get a gun? He undid what Obama had put in place. Oh, the very first thing he did. Uh, yeah. The oh. very first thing he did was to do that. And then, he, and then they're all screaming, it's mental health, it's mental health. But he allowed them to go, he allowed the mentally unhealthy now to get guns. Yeah, well, this is a crazy person. That's how we write it off. It's a crazy person. Well, the reason we don't want people to promiscuously be able to buy guns is because there are a lot of crazy people, you know. And, and yeah, sure, he's crazy. Any, you know, I mean, I just found out that did you hear today that he's going to plead guilty, which I think probably is not the worst idea in the world. Uh, they'll probably go, uh, oh, I don't know, they'll go easier on them and not use as much juice when they put them to sleep through lethal injection. Um, but, uh, you know, they use, a lot of times they use the defense, well, he's, he was crazy. And then the state tries to prove he's not crazy. And mm -hmm. how can you say that anybody that takes a gun, goes into a, a schoolroom, shoots 17 people dead, is sane on any level? Right. You know, if that's the definition of sanity, then God help us all. Not well, he, only that, he pulled a fire alarm to, to get the kids to come out into the hallway so he'd have lots of targets. <sighs> Boy. He thought that one out, didn't he? Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah, sure, the guy was crazy. And, and, but, but still, we made it, it, we made him... He made it easy for him to 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 live out his craziness, okay, and to and to work it out. It's it's terrible. And here we are, and we're talking about it, and we're gonna probably talk about it a little bit more. And nothing's gonna happen, and then everything's gonna die down, and they're gonna get back to the other news that comes along and and bleed that to death. Meanwhile, we're waiting for the next mass shooting to happen every sixty hours. Every 60 yeah. hours, you say? That's what I believe they said. Every 60 hours is some kind of a multiple shooting in this country. A school shooting. A school shooting. How wow. can that be that CNN's not covering them all? Yeah. Hell, it's easy. We got, they got Skype, don't they? You know, I mean, it, it's just... We don't hear about them except for, you know, every couple of months, every two months, whatever it is. But if they're every 60 hours, you would think that they would, and CNN would probably start a school shooting channel. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, boy. There's, there's marketing, right? Right? You were talking yeah. about marketing to this stuff, and that's yeah. what they're doing. I mean, the only, I reason, the only reason I wish Phil were here tonight is because he would be talking pro guns. Oh, well, you know, the guy, maybe I should play the devil's advocate here. He would say, oh, the kid was crazy. And what are we going to do about crazy kids? That's what we got to work on. Well, I'm sorry. You know, you gave him the ability to get this weapon of mass destruction. I got a, I got a better argument for that. There are crazies in every country, and we're the only country who has this problem. Well, 
I will disagree with you to this extent. Other countries have had similar problems, but it's been at the hands of terrorists. Right. You know, right. it hasn't been at the hands of an individual. In the case of the, the bar in, uh, in, uh, in, in where Miami or where Fort Lauderdale, wherever that bar was, the gay bar, uh, that was a single individual. This was a single individual. The thing up at uh, Newtown was a single individual. That we have Las not. Vegas. We sit around all. Yeah, Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. We sit around all the time worrying about ISIS, and we don't have to worry about ISIS. We're killing ourselves. Right, and that's what I mean. There's we're we're no one else has this problem but this country. You're right, and nobody has this kind of guns besides this country. So, you know, you could take crazy and throw it out the window because it's, it, you know, if they can't, if there's no access to guns, what are they going to go with a knife? How many people are they going to kill with a knife? How easy is it to really build a bomb to do any kind of damage? How easy, what are you going to go in there with a pipe? Start whacking people in the head? You're not going to get very far. You're not going to kill 17 people before you stopped. So. Yes, Bob had his okay. hand up. Bob? Yeah, I, I believe Australia and England both had. Uh, a shooter go into a school and kill children. And what they did about it was they changed laws. Oh, yeah. in, in Australia, you cannot buy, I don't think you can buy a gun. Uh, and it was, there was the, the Lint chocolate store where it happened, and it was a mass shooting. And at that point, the conservative prime minister of Australia said, that's it, we got to pass a law. And now it, 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 you play hell getting a gun in Australia. No NRA there. No. And the NRA, God, somebody should shoot them. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, these people are criminal. All right? And they, here, who was it I saw today? What, uh, there was some congresswoman, and they were following her down the halls and say, why isn't Congress doing anything about this? And she's, basically she said, the NRA has bought Congress. I heard that. That's right. Yeah. Marco Rubio, state of Florida, right? Yeah. He, he is, a, what, he's considered an A-rated NRA advocate. He gets more money from the NRA. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, the, Bob. Yeah, uh, I, I watch a lot of news in England because I don't trust our news. Yeah. And since they've gotten rid of the gun problem there, you know, crazies are going to try to kill people no matter what. So they have problems in London now with knives, yes. people stabbing, and acid attacks. And they're working on legislation to make it uh, harder to get, you know, the type of stuff that they're using to throw in people's faces and stuff. Yeah. Wow. But at least, you know, you can't kill as many people with a knife or a Well, also a also also you right. can't hurt somebody with either of those things without being close to them. Yeah. Here you could be a block away and pick somebody off. You know, and with an AK-47, you can shoot off how many rounds in a, a second, a minute in those, with those, one of those guns? You could be blind and still kill two bill. Yeah. yeah exact good point very good point you know and the worst thing about this shooting is someplace in this country there is a teenager that has watched the death count on that and the injury count and he's saying to himself i can top that mm -hmm. well you know what this kid said to uh, this one person who he was uh, he was doing something online with he said i'm i want to be a professional school killer or something like yeah. that, to that extent. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, there are going to be a lot. Of, I'm worried about the copycats now. You know, and somebody going, well, I can do it better than he did it. <clears throat> and I know a way to get away with it. This kid thought he was going to get away with it. This kid just, after he did the shooting, because everybody was so panicked, they didn't even see who was shooting. Uh, and he, um, uh, let me see here. J uh, Jerry Montz? Do I know you, Jerry? Hello. J Jerry, you haven't, you've never called the show before, have you? I called about two years ago. Oh, really? Well, it's uh, it, it once in a while is fine. And the reason I felt compelled to call tonight, Yeah. I listen almost every night, by the way. Oh, very good. Thank you. But I live in Coral Springs, Florida. Yeah. Five minutes from that school. Wow. 
and what's going on right now with our illustrious president is sickening me. First of all, he came down here today. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he avoided the cameras. He went to visit people in a hospital, and then he went to the sheriff's headquarters. Nothing public. I, I'm sure most of you have seen that lady, the mother of one of the girls that got killed. As a matter of fact, she got buried today. Who ranted and raved about Trump? Just said it's time for some action. Yeah, I want to see somebody explode in front of him like that. But of course, they're going to protect him, and they'll never let it happen. He he uh, obviously he is staying away from the press. He's staying away from the public because he is afraid of getting exactly that kind of reaction. It's a year since his last press conference. Well, he's got that wonderful shill that stands up for him. He doesn't really need to hold a press conference. Nobody wants to hear him talk anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, the They're other so thing, stupid. The uh, the shop where he bought his rifle. Yeah. Uh, the guy's afraid for his life right now. He closed his store. He's hiding. Wow. I don't blame wow. him. Wow. Wow. But he didn't do anything wrong, technically speaking. No. Running a but, business. The point mm. I, I really wanted to make was, yeah. this tragedy is going to be a lot different from all the other tragedies. And the reason being, what you're left with is 3,000 14 to 18-year-old, well-spoken, well-educated, affluent kids that are very astute with social media. The pressure to change these laws is not going to stop. These kids are going to solve this problem. And they're not going away. Well, and they I, have, a lot, they have I, a lot of friends. I certainly hope you're right. But nothing is going to happen if it's left up to the adults. They, no, they, absolutely they're not. going to do the whole thoughts and prayers deal, and then uh, they're going to calm down until the next shooting. And then they'll go thoughts and prayers again, and then wait to the, for the next shooting. Uh, why we, you know, we should have learned at Newtown, and now we've had Newtown how many times over happen in this country now, and nothing has been done. And, well, and you yeah. know, right where I live, and I'm telling you that five minutes from here, we had 49 people killed in Orlando, mm -hmm. and right. a few months ago, I'm not sure exactly when, we had a lunatic shoot up Fort Lauderdale Airport. It all happens here. You guys reason. have you guys have one of the uh, lax most lax gun laws in the country. Well, I'll tell you, I, I do have a carry permit, but when I first moved to Florida in 1990, I got my driver's license, and I went to a sporting goods store. I was about I don't know 35 at the time, mm -hmm. and. I was looking at handguns because growing up in New York, there was no such thing as owning a gun. You couldn't have one. That's right. So I was just looking. And I said to myself, you know, I could buy anything in this shop. And then I looked over to my left, and I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but there were three homeboys. And I said to myself, you know what? So can they. Yep. Yep. Uh, and what I, when I first came down here, I went... I, av I avoid Miami like the plague, but on occasion you have to go down there. I saw a sign on a store. I was in Florida maybe a month. Pistolas, $69. And I said to myself, welcome to Miami. <laughs> uh, wow. You know, what are you going to say about that? You know, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I lived in Texas for a while, and, and in Texas... You were still allowed to use sidearms. I mean, you couldn't conceal. It was against the law to conceal, but you could you could literally be packing heat right on your hip. Uh, and every Saturday night, we had a, a rash of killings that would happen in bars with people that got drunk and pulled the pistol out of their holster and shot a few people. Yes, Bob. I was stationed in Texas uh, when I was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was quite a shock for me being growing up in the streets of New York City and stuff to uh, watch TV when I was living in Big Spring, Texas. And every night they had every uh, 
Sunday night they had the uh, violent death count for the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, in Big Spring one day, I was sitting in the downtown, and this guy comes riding down the street, and he's on his horse, packing iron, and he's spitting and chewing. Uh, right behind him on the next horse was a kid, I'd say he was about 13 or 14. He was packing iron, spitting and chewing. <laughs> and on the third horse was like a three-year-old. He wasn't packing iron, but he was already spitting and chewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Gentlemen yes. in Florida, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name. Jerry. Jerry? Jerry, yes. so I want to go back to your point uh, about um, these kids, you know, well-educated kids, well-spoken, you know, socially, uh, social media adept and all that, that you think that they're going to change the gun laws. Do you think that maybe you're so close to it, you're in this community, you're living it, that it's all heightened? Because here I am, I'm in Virginia, and I see this as no different from any other of these incidents that have happened. And I get there's a, a passion right now in the community to try to get something done. But really, when you think about it, the numbers, even if it's 3,000 kids, that's 3,000 as compared to 330 million that are in this country how do you really – how do you put any pressure on, on Congress that's bought by the NRA? I don't remember seeing – like, for example, um, Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the survivors were five- and six-year-old kids. I don't know anything about the survivors from uh, the Pulse nightclub, but here are kids that lived it, breathed it, videoed it, and survived it. I think they're going to have a lot of influence on what goes on in this country. They have a lot of friends. There's a lot of kids around the country but, just like but, them. But you see, there, there are how many of them? But the rest of the country, the further you get away from the epicenter of this thing, I mean, where you are right now, you're, you're feeling, you're feeling the, uh, probably the sadness is in the air down there. You know. Well, it is very somber. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but yet, the further you get out from that epicenter, the less it becomes the same event. And by the time you get way out, it's something you watch on TV, which is the same place where you watch, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, um, all your other TV shows, where you watch This Is Us. It's the same place you watch this tragedy. Um, yeah. And we, we, because it's coming through on that tube, we're getting to the point where we have a hard time distinguishing between real life and the phony life that is most of television, because it's coming through that same screen. You know, you and I, we watch TV. Um, the, new, the new generation, I don't even know what they call them. They're not millennials, what are they? Well, they don't watch television anymore. They don't, they have other, other means of communicating with each other and learning things. They don't want. They don't watch the news. That's why all the commercials are for uh, for medicine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's our demographic, not yes. theirs. Yes, yes. That's yes, part yes. of the problem, though, because where are they getting their news from? That's the problem. See, they're they're getting their news from sources that anybody can anybody can pose as a news source. So there's no vetting of what is real and what isn't real. That's part of the problem. I could agree with you on part of that, yes. Uh, but they know what they want to accomplish, and I think they know how to accomplish it. I've seen quite a few interviews on TV, and I was, I'm impressed that these kids know how to communicate like that because, I mean, most of the people you see have their head down and they're texting. These, these people are actually, these kids were actually talking and verbalizing what they were thinking, and they were doing a very good job of it. I hope, well, I hope I'm can, not wrong. Well, I, I hope I, they can mobilize the rest of the country, the, the kids yeah. in the rest of the country, and say, hey, enough, enough of this. My now, high school could be next. Now, Mark lives in Florida, too, and he's in Naples. Now, mm -hmm. how far is Naples from – you're in Coral Gables, right? Coral Springs. Coral Springs. About two and a half hours. Oh, so yeah, there, is right a, at, there is a, a right difference there. Right across the there. state. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, what I'm thinking is – 
I know that you're moved by this, Mark, because you're a thinking kind of person. Hi, Kevin. You're a thinking kind of person, but still, you're further away from that epicenter. But, that, but the point is, Alex, is that, it can, you know, it's like a lotto. It can happen anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know, what are we going to now teach uh, defensive gun you know, defensive driving next to defensive gun uh, gun work. You know, this is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, uh, we have crappy politicians down here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was telling already oh, oh, oh. Bob, 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 Bob had his hand up. Bob, uh, in, the the gentleman from Florida was talking about how all the teenagers were going to go over the internet. Now I saw something on Facebook tonight. I haven't been able to verify its accuracy but apparently there's a petition going around that on april 20th all high school students are going to just walk out of school and they're not coming back until something is done that would be very interesting now i saw that i don't know how accurate it is but i saw it posted on facebook that a lot of teachers and students are talking about a mass walkout nationwide how effective would that be oh very well, yeah, but what I'm saying, what I'm thinking, my first thought was the parents who don't want their kids staying out of school. You know, uh, I mean, they're we'll going to be, be sitting in empty classrooms. They're going to be no, but they're going to be right wing parents who are going to make their kids go to school. So they'll be forty percent filled. Okay, but be I mean, right wing kids too, right? They're going to be quite those frankly. What I would do is, uh, if I was a parent, I would say that I'm not sending my kid to school, and the reason I'm not sending my kid to school is you do not make it safe enough for him to be there. You know, it used to be that when you'd left your kid off at school, you knew it was the one safe place they were going to be, and you didn't mind. You know, I once used the joke, but it's true. You know, every day you would leave your kid off to be raised by somebody else for eight hours a day or six hours a day uh, who you hardly even knew but was his teacher. Uh, and, but we always thought of the schools as a safe place that you went. And now, I mean, what? I mean, do you feel safe? I don't know if any, any of you have kids of school age like that, but do you feel safe sending <clears throat> your kid to school? My son is a high school teacher uh-huh. in a different school. Yeah. And, um, do you feel safe about him having that profession? We well, I do. <laughs> up until up until Wednesday. Yeah. And I asked him if he keeps his classroom door locked, and he said, "Not usually." I said, "Well, I think he really should." You know, a couple of those teachers uh, that got killed went out to their hallway to lock the door. Wow! From the outside, where the key is. But that and, those assault rifles would that, would that keep them out? Yeah, you. The way I'm, I happen to be in the hardware business. It's it's a what they call a classroom function lock set. You turn the key one way and you unlock the knob or lever. You turn it the other way and now it's locked, but it's always open from the inside. But they've come out with a new style of lock, which is basically the same thing, but there's a cylinder on the inside. That also that only controls the outside lever. You can lock or unlock the lever from the inside without opening the door, and it can only be done with a key. If they would have done that, they wouldn't have had such a tragedy. You oh, know, here's the, another little one. Well, that's something maybe they have to do. I mean, you know, they well, when kids go to school now, they have to go through metal detectors and things like that. But that doesn't seem to stop this. But if you made it so that every teacher had to lock the door to the room while that class was in session, it would prevent this kind of thing from happening. Unless, of course, that kid was in the room with the, uh, with the, with the other people, but, uh, you know. Or if the, if the guy comes into the school uh, when all the gates are open, when they're getting ready for dismissal. Yeah. This happened at like 2.20 in school. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and remember he uh, broke the, he set the fire alarm off to get everybody yeah, in the Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Right, yeah. right. Jeff, what, you were going to say that? Yeah, I was going to say he put the fire alarm on so everybody had to open the door and come out. I mean, the guy was at least clear uh, that he wanted to maximize the number of kids that he could kill. This, this guy is the most dangerous kind of guy in the world because he's a guy who's very clear-headed but crazy. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Clear head and crazy is a dangerous combination. Right. Because and with the maximum bullets. So you fired 150 uh, shots. Uh, and in how much time? I think it was nine minutes. Yeah, nine minutes. Wow. And he left. He didn't get. Yeah, no, what I was going to yeah, say he is he then mixed, mixed with the kids. He mixed with the kids, pleased. left with the kids, and then went down to McDonald's. And then to some other place, I think Subway. He, he subs went to Subway it? and bought a soda and then went to McDonald's. And then went to McDonald's. And then on his way home, they arrested him. Did right. he just drop the weapon? Is that what he did? He just yeah, dropped the he weapon dropped when he was it. done? Yeah. He abandoned it in the school. Yeah. Yes, uh, Bob. When he was walking into the school, there was another kid in front of him. And he told the kid, you better get out of here because things are going to get crazy. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, at least he was considerate. To one kid. To one kid. I just, you know, uh, all I'm saying is, here we are, you know, and, and believe it or not, we got a lot of people listening to us right now. Uh, in fact, our, our main audience now is a video audience, not an audio audience, because uh, uh, I guess it's just easier to get this by audio, video now than by audio. Mm -hmm. and, and there are a lot of people out there, and this topic is obviously because people are listening to it, is registering with them and striking something in their, in their core. But nevertheless, again, what do we do to make sure that next Monday we're still as passionate about this out here away from the epicenter uh, as we are right now? Because we, I think we do get frustrated. I think part of the problem you have today is Donald Trump. The news that happens around him changes the, changes the subject very quickly, not, on, not only in this case, but in everything. When you start to think about what's happened in the last 13 months since he's been president, the, the news changes very quick. So this can go away. In fact, they're talking about the allegations the, the uh, they're talking about the indictments now. They've gotten off the the, the, the school topic. Yeah, there's immediate distraction. Yeah, so that's part of it is the the distraction. It, you mean the indictments that, uh, that were made yeah. in the uh, Russia? Indictments. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 you, you know what it is. The news is like a dog who sees a squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Wherever and, it goes, and, and that's it. Fall. I don't have to say anything any more than that. The, the, the news sees a squirrel and they go chasing it and they go chasing it as long as the squirrel is running around until they see something else or another squirrel and they go chasing that squirrel. Yep. And that's what news yep. has become because news is no longer what it was when I was growing up where a network had a news department so they could point to the news department and say, see, look at what a wonderful news department we have. No, the reason, the thing is that they have news now so they can make money. And because they want to make money, they want to keep ginning up stories. And this is just another story. I hate to say this, Jerry, because you live so close to it, but this is just another story they're ginning up. And as soon yeah, as something really, else comes along, they'll gin that up. There's no shortage of shit going on that our president is, is stirring up. And by the way, while they're doing it, they're doing the whole thoughts and prayers deal. They're right. acting, uh -huh. they, you know, when they talk about a mother or something, they will suddenly their voice will go lower. And they'll be, you know, this. And they get dramatic. And then you watch the reporters yeah. in the street, and they're all trying to, they're, they figure this is their, uh, their ticket to the big time. You know, they're going to. And they're the gonna, music. That's, a, that's the worst, is the music. The music? The music. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And the slow fade to black. Yeah, fade and, to black. And then, and then, the, and then the commercial oh, comes you, on. You know what really bothers they, me is when the. Is when the network Pathetic. finally decides to title the incident, you know, like yeah. tragedy in Florida, boom, boom, boom. You know, yeah. it's it's. Just, and let's go to the Olympics. But you know, why, when are they going to use this wonderful medium they have to really do something about this? I mean, like the talk we're having here is probably more valuable than anything you've seen on the networks. It's being. I'm getting the response from people who are watching it. Uh, because we have a person who lives right there, who is impassioned by what has happened in his community, uh, and, and, and all the people here who are incensed by it and saddened by it. But what are we going to do Monday? How are we going to stop this? You know, 
uh, Paul Ryan isn't going to listen to you. Trump isn't going to listen to you. Um, Mitch McConnell isn't going to listen to you. Who is going to listen to us? Yes. I'll tell you what, Jerry, if it makes you, I don't know if it makes you feel any better. I got a 12 year old that goes to middle school and my gut wrenches every time she walks out the door and goes to school. Now this morning was tough for her to go to school this morning. I can understand that. It just, you know, seeing this crap is just killing me. What do you tell her? What do you tell her when she's? What do I tell her? I, I, she, I told, I made her watch it because I want her to know what to do. I asked her what kind of drills are they doing, and she says, "Well, we do one once a year." And I go, "Why are they only doing them once a year?" And she goes, "I don't know. We did more in elementary school than we did in middle school." And I go, you know, and the 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 schools I've gone to the the meetings and. In middle in uh, elementary school, I was asking why they had such low gates, you know, and I'm you know, go you, you know these crazies around here. And this was two years ago. Uh, you need to start putting up some gates. I don't, you know, I hate putting up a fortress around these schools, but it's getting crazy out there. And now we go to middle school, and they're starting to put up gates. And now they've got they've got nice gates, and they've got uh, you know good secure perimeter around the building. But, you know, there's still entryways, and, you know, I ask her about drills, and they do one or two a year, and they've got their code reds and their code blues, and they had a lockdown a couple weeks ago because someone in the neighborhood was loose, but, you know, she said there really wasn't much going on. I said, do you question that? And she said, no, they don't have any, you know, I said, do they have meetings and, and ask for feedback? And she says, no, they don't. I said, well, you ought to say something. <sighs> It's you know it's 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 not right. I said, well, next PTO meeting, I'm bringing it up. Okay, so let's just throw this question out there, and, and what do we do about it? I mean, we're sitting here, we're talking about around the well, situation, first but thing what do, do is we? What are, because it can happen anywhere. I, I'm at, I'm at the point where yes, it'll happen anywhere. If it's happening in Florida, <clears> it's happening in Connecticut, it's happening in Virginia, it's <clears> going to happen anywhere. Yeah. But the so point not, is, and, and what I live in the country. What, what is plenty of these guys what, out here in, the, in oh, the boondocks that love to go out and shoot squirrels, and there's no reason why they won't come down into town and start shooting people. Uh, I, that's all I gotta but say. But the first question is, I mean, where do we begin? Where do we start? Where do we? How do we? How do we stem this tide? You know, uh, we're not. Uh, we're we're not going to eliminate guns. You just we no. we will not be able to do that. We should. We have to prepare, huh? What we do you have to prepare about? somehow. Yeah. What are you preparing? You're going to give her a, a you know you're going to give her a little <laughs> brownie to put in her. No, bag? you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to recognize the nuts. You know, first off, try and try and recognize them. Uh, but here here you had the biggest the biggest uh, law organization in America, the FBI. Who got thirty calls about this guy and that never and never followed up on any of them? Now I'm not the, going to blame the FBI. They may have been only doing what they could do given the legalities of it all. No, they they came out today and they admitted they admitted it fell through the cracks. Yep. Yeah. That was a canyon, not a crack. Yeah. But they admitted it. So this is not. Uh, they did everything they could. They just let this die on the vine. Wow. wow. Yeah, and wh why did that happen? I mean, you have to consider, like, did that happen uh, six months ago also? But nobody found out about it. Yeah. Well, I believe sure. the police showed up at their house, what, like 30 times? And 30 the mother times, wanted, yeah. yep. And the mother wanted him uh, put away. Wow. But do you, do you, yeah. you, you did hear, uh, you know, I, the question always was, the, the kid had a mother who died, and this family then took him in. They were friends, I guess, of the family or whatever, and took him in. He came with his AK-47, and they said, well, what, why, why didn't you do something about it? Well, we told him he had to do something about it. We put a safe in his room, and he had to lock it in the safe. And I'm thinking, you know, I, 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 I become a foster parent or whatever to a kid, and he shows up with an AK-47, I'm going to say, not in my house, you don't. Absolutely. I mean, that was the first 
sign of stupidity in this whole thing. Why the hell did they put the safe in his room? They should have had it in their room and where they, they had the key should, to the gun. Uh, well, when I first heard, the, uh, the, they said, well, we had a safe for him, for him to put it in. And I went, oh, well, they had a safe and they had the combination, right? No, it was a safe no. in his room that he had a combination to. So what good does that do? You know? So I mean, it, it's it's all insanity, and it, it, you know, but but it, and, you know, we we can sit here and we can talk about how terrible it is and how this fell through the cracks and this fell through the cracks. But the truth of the matter is, there are 17 people who are dead now as a result of it. And what do we do to make sure there aren't another 17? You know, these are massive amounts of people who died. The ones in Vegas were a massive amount of people who died. You know, the kids in Newtown. Actually, a smaller amount by comparison to what went on in Vegas. I mean, <laughs> how do we stop this insanity? And, uh, you know, uh, short of stopping everybody from buying guns, which we could do and we should do, but we won't, we're, we're dreaming if we think we can get it done. And I think if you well, had a good Supreme Court going right now, you could probably make the case that this is a uh, you know, in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, the right of the people to bear arms will not be infringed. Well, it gives you a caveat for why you can own a gun in order to maintain a well-ordered militia. Well, I don't think this kid belonged to any well-ordered militia, all right? <laughs> and so, therefore, he didn't have the right to bear arms. But you, 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 and you had a Supreme Court, I think, in 1936 who, who considered it a collective right, not an individual right, okay? In other words, you had to be part of a group. You had to be a police force, for instance, as a militia, right? Uh, and uh, uh, then another Supreme Court came along and said, no, 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 this is what it means. So, you know, that thing's been batted around for a long time. But why don't we just read the words as they're written and, you know, it's not open to much interpretation. There's a caveat there. There's a reason why you have a right to bear arms, and if you don't meet that reason, you can't have one. But we can't go in and make that case because there's a Supreme Court there that would never vote in our favor. So this is all a matter of politics and getting the right people on the Supreme Court and the right people in Congress and stuff, and then maybe, maybe we could start banning guns, but not in my lifetime and probably not in your lifetime. You got to get money out of politics. It's the only way. Right now, with the NRA and all their money, that they're, the only way to stop it is to take the money away so no one's beholden to them anymore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, Both the Republicans out. But the only way you're going to do that is with a constitutional amendment, and that is going to happen with the current Congress. You know, I wish I could say that this kind of thing that, that happens happens because Trump is president, but it was happening while Obama was president, too. And if Look, I we have a sick society. We ha these kids come from horrible backgrounds. You know, they, I'd love to know more about this kid's background, uh, broken homes or whatever tragedy and, and whatever this kid suffered in his life that turned him this way. We have so we multiply that by so many times. Our kids, you know, we, people who raise kids, you don't need any kind of you just want to have a kid or you don't even give a crap if you want to have a kid or not have kids and then they are selfish and they don't take care of these kids properly and they live through tragedy and they live through horrible scarring events in their lives and this is what the man how it manifests itself that's true yeah yeah um, we pay the price for their did you see what ted cruz said today this was really something uh, he, he was he, somebody in the press asked him some question. And he said, well, I blame Hollywood. He oh said, he, he, really? he, he said, <laughs> Rambo, he, he said, right? he said, Hollywood, our, our governor, our the, governor the, here in Kentucky blames it on violent video games. Yeah. It, but he said that, you know, it, it, the violence that is inherent in in the movies in Hollywood, how dare these people be uh, be complaining about this? They're hypocrites. And I went. There's something wrong with Ted Cruz. I mean, there's really something wrong with Ted Cruz. You know, oh, here comes Mark again. We we lost him there for a moment. Let me add him. Well, it also goes back to what Rob's saying. It's the parents letting them use that stuff. Yeah. Or letting the parents, you know, the parents are letting them 
use those video games or the parents are letting them watch those movies a little bit too early and they're getting influenced and they're not paying attention to what they're doing. Can we do something like... Uh, 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 Scarring them too early. You know, I mean, I, uh, uh, it's strange of us to try and come up with a solution here because none of us are empowered enough to do it. But couldn't we start somewhere with like saying, hey, if you own a gun, you have to be insured? Isn't that... Uh, 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 a good th w w you agree with that vernon eh. yeah 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 if you had to if you had to have liability insurance for that gun you might think a little differently a lot of people might not have a gun because they have to go get the liability insurance uh but oh. if you if you own a car you have to have insurance and it's far less lethal believe it or not than a gun yes jerry that not having insurance doesn't stop a lot of drivers. Yeah, no, you're right about That's that. So true. Um, uh, just make it harder for people to get them. They don't want to. They want to make it easier for people to get them. You know, uh, yes, Jeff. But you, be a stricter you, background, you, Jeff. you have to you have to turn your mic on, Jeff. You don't have your mic. How about on. now? Ah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, my brother-in-law, he would be against any kind of law that, that would limit the amount of ability to have guns. Now, I don't even know if he has a gun or not, but certainly if he, if he would, uh, from his Republican perspective, mm -hmm. stop making more, gov uh, more laws and, and more things that I that people have to pay for. It's wrong. Yeah. That, that, that's his attitude. Well, isn't there something absolutely sick in this country where we care, where these people care more about their gun? I mean, a literal love for their gun and the ability to have their gun than they do about their children? I mean, that's that's the amazing yeah. part about it. I mean, when you hear people talk about their gun, oh, you can't take this away from me. You know, Charlton Heston, take this from my cold, dead hands. You know, and I'm thinking, but your kids are getting killed. Don't you want to do away with that problem? Oh, well, it's not the gun's fault. It's the person who has the gun. Yeah, but, you know, you have a gun, and what's to say tomorrow you don't get a tumor in your head and you go crazy and take out half your neighborhood? We've just put the method of your eradication in your hands. And we've done nothing to stop it. I mean, I hate guns. I've always hated guns. Well, I, I hated them after the time that somebody stuck a gun in my face for an hour with the, with the gun cocked. He, he was a friend of mine, and he was a kid, and he was drunk. And he thought that was funny to have a cocked gun in my face for an hour. And finally, and after about an hour, I said, that's it. And I just turned around and said, if you're going to shoot, you're going to shoot. And I just left. But after an hour, looking at a gun cocked in my face, I never wanted to see another gun again. I, I can't even pick up a gun. If you put a gun down here and said, here, feel this, feel the heft on it, I could not pick that gun up. That's how, how, how phobic I am about guns. I wish everybody were phobic about guns. They kill. That's all they're meant to do. They're not meant to do anything else. Fuck Trump. Fuck Ryan. Fuck all of them. You know, but that's not going to bring back the 17 people who are dead in, in, in Jerry's neighborhood. You know, do you know any of these people, Jerry, personally? No, I don't. No. Oh. No. Well, thank, God, thank goodness for that. You know, uh, otherwise you, you'd really... You know, you're hurting enough as it is because it happened next door. But you know, there are people like there are people like me. Yeah, yeah. My kids are a little older now, but they're just like me. Yeah, but you yeah. know, when you raised your kid, it was a safer time. Jeff, I know somebody who lost his uh, child in Newport, in Newtown. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. What are their policies? I don't know. I'd be really curious to see. It's not the kind of thing that you want to start. Well, I just think maybe you knew them well. and Discussion, you, knew were, you know. You knew they were gun folks, and then suddenly they lose a child. Do they change? Do they suddenly yeah. go, hmm, maybe guns aren't a good idea? I don't think so, but 
I can't say the other. Wow. Uh, it's just part of the, the, the partisan politics in this country, whether or not, it, you know, like, like, for instance, what Alex said before about, about uh, you, you choose your guns over your kids. It's more about choosing the right over the left. It goes up higher than that, right? Well, yeah, I don't understand. I, no but you know, politics. Here's what I don't understand. I, Why is this a right or left issue? This really should be one of those issues that it's an individual issue, but it's not whether you're right or left. Is there something dogmatic about being right or being left that makes you pro or anti-gun? But apparently, that's the way it goes right down the middle. I mean, if you're going to vote on this in Congress, it's going to be the Republicans are going to vote for guns and the Democrats are going to vote against guns. Uh, it shouldn't be a partisan issue. This is a human issue. Uh, and so many of these issues we deal with every day are human issues and not partisan issues, but we make them partisan issues. I mean... Uh, I, they go right down party lines, so they become partisan issues. And yeah. if we get a Democratic Senate and, Cong uh, and uh, Congress, maybe they'll make something happen if we get a Democratic, someone in the White House that's Democratic. You never know. By the way, did you see the piece of news that came out that, um, you know, they're starting to release some of the stuff they have on these guys, the, these Russians that supposedly fix the election? Uh, tried to rig the election, and one of them was a massive Facebook thing to tell people to vote for Jill Stein. Yeah, because that Who goes be... to Russia huh? quite a bit. Does she Who go... goes to Russia? Oh, quite really? A bit. I didn't know that. Really? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Maybe she fixed the election. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's it... We, we're we're living in. Do you think? Do you do you think we're living in perilous times? I think the world's we're in stupid time. The world is going to hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, is it the world? I, mean, I guess it is the world. You know, but yeah, uh, we're leading the way. Yeah, we're yeah. leading the way. I mean, how this country could go from putting Barack Obama in office to putting Trump in office boggles the mind. Because how do you make that leap from one to the other? And what's scary, what's scary is what's can scary? you go back? Huh? What's scary is can you go back? Once you've got a, once you've opened up this can of worms that's President Trump, can you ever go back? To, to having somebody, you know, tr more traditional in there, or is this just going to be the way it goes? Because, you know, this is the way to win. So now whether it's Democrat or Republican, you're going to have some half-cocked nut in there who can speak his mind because that's what people will vote for. Right. Yeah, who's going to want to go in and clean up the mess? Yeah, if you can't ever do it. Exactly. Well, once the uh, yahoos that voted for him realized that he's not delivering what he promised those coal mine jobs etc uh i think they might realize they made a mistake i hope they do well uh, the coal mines are going to suffer anyway because there's no is getting less and less reason every year to use coal you know uh, uh, uh and I, I you know i don't think that you know can can america be bought off by uh, a tax reduction or what they think will be a tax reduction I mean, whatever tax reduction they got, they yeah. lost. They lost in their four hundred one ks in the last couple of weeks. You know, so uh, most of them. You, you forgot to mention it's clean, beautiful coal. Uh, the clean coal, yeah, clean coal. Well, those guys' new job are, are going to be building that wall down there. Well, you know something. I think Trump's wonderful that he wants these miners to go back to work so they can go down there and get black lung disease black and, lung and, and, and die and die coal. and die in cave-ins and and things like that. Yeah, that, that's really clean, the rather than somehow lung. spending that that time, effort, and money to train them in new jobs in new uh, technologies so that they can uh, can have a healthy life. I mean, yeah. these a lot are guys, of them won't take the training because they still believe in Trump. 
Yeah, but these guys want to go back into those coal mines and breathe that coal dust and 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 die of some respiratory disease or or a cave in or whatever. Because those those mine owners, they say they're all for safety, but you know they got a little place you can go if there's a cave in, and I think you got 24 hours of oxygen. This mm -hmm. is the kind of jobs he wants to bring back to America. You betcha. Yeah. I mean, what, bring back the steel mills and people can get burned to death. Yes, uh, Vernon. Uh, how many of you guys have ever heard of Robert Reich? Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was the Secretary of Labor under Bill Clinton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he has since been a professor of uh, uh, policy, public policy at <laughs> Berkeley. And he is now doing a series of videos on YouTube called Inequality Media. And the latest one that I watched was 20 things that Donald Trump promised during the campaign that he has broken his promise on. What the is problem that? is the hmm. people who voted for Trump will never watch that video. Do you remember some of them? Uh, not off the because, top of my head. Because if I remember correctly, Trump's way of campaigning was to promise everything. Yeah. You well, know, one I, of the things that I do remember is that he would he would uh, he would he would get rid of the uh, value. Uh, what is it called? The carried interest that uh, the the hedge funds uh, have. You know, the hedge mm -hmm. funds owners have carried interest. He says we'll do away with that, and we're gonna we're gonna change the tax code so that rich people like me will have to pay more taxes, and that's the biggest bunch of malarkey. He just got himself $12 million, supposedly, with yeah. his tax break, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, that's a that's a an estimate based upon money he claims he has, which I think he lies about his net worth all the time. Did you hear about, by the way, I, I should I should get this out here, a couple of little items. Uh, did you hear about this, uh, 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 this Ronan Farrow has a story now? Uh, about uh, uh, Trump was at the Playboy Mansion with The Apprentice a few years back, 2006, I think, or through 2008, and he met up with a Playboy model, and he had sex with her. Her name is Karen McDougal, Playmate, Playmate of the Year for 1998, and this happened in uh, 2006. Um, supposedly, he paid her, or somebody paid her. Uh, the National Enquirer paid her one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to keep her mouth shut. They bought her story. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. They, yeah. and, and they they bought her story and then didn't publish it. And uh, that's because the publisher of the National Enquirer is a good friend of who? <laughs> the Don Donald. Donald Trump. Right. And so that's one of the stories that's come out. The other story that's come out is Stormy Daniels who just the name alone is enough to laugh at, um, uh, held a shiny gold mini dress she wore to an alleged tryst with Donald Trump in 2006. Apparently all this happened about a couple of months after Barron was born, both the Stormy Daniels thing and this other story. Uh, and, uh, sh and now she's looking to test it for his DNA. <laughs> So she we're, purposely kept it she, pristine. It's it's another Monica Lewinsky deal, you know, where Jeez. she thinks there's a stain on the dress of Donald's. Um, I hate. I can't say it. Spermatozoa. I can't say it in conjunction with the word Donald. You know, <laughs> it, 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 just, it just makes me want to vomit. You know. So. Those are the two big stories out about Donald today, uh, but. And Melania didn't go on to the helicopter with them today. Yeah. Oh, really? She, she didn't get on the helicopter to go to Air Force One. She went in a private motor motorcade. And they're speculating uh, this might be putting a wedge between him and her. I, I, might be. What? These what stories be? about, I hope it is. Well, that would be a story that would be worth watching is uh, their divorce proceedings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I kind of there's part of me that feels very sorry for Melania. 
because she has that look in her face like I'm being held hostage. <laughs> She's also she makes it to 20. What'd you say, Bob? She probably has Stockholm syndrome. It, it could be. It could very well be. That's a syndrome, by the way, in case you don't know, folks, that people get when they're being held captive. Okay, and then they somehow. What, what's like that? Like that TV series you're watching. It was what happened to Patty Hearst? Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst yeah. was a, was a good example of Stockholm syndrome. Yes. She became friends and then even had sex with and was part of that gang because. She felt if she embraced them, that was the way of protecting herself. Uh, but Melania, I, I keep wanting to put out a bumper sticker or something. Blink twice, Melania, if you want out. <laughs> you know? I mean. Well, what's that uh, thing where you put the black dot in the middle of the palm of your hand and you can hold that up while, while passing a police car and that's a signal that you need help? Oh, is that what you do? I didn't know I never that. heard that. I don't think the police have either, so I don't think it helps. But, you know, what we've done, what we have going on here is a, 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 a morally uh, corrupt, uh, morally an immoral world that's been created by Donald Trump. Uh, and, and I, you know, uh, here we go. Ray Renati is calling, too. Hello. So we have a, now we now have what's called a full house, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's uh, with me. It's uh, it's 10 people. And uh, Ray, you've been listening to what we've been talking hey. about, right? No, I just got on. I was out of the house. Well, if, well, in case you don't know, we, a guy who's sitting right next to you uh, is Jerry Mons. And Jerry lives about, what, 20 minutes from the school? Where five minutes, five, five minutes. minutes from the school, even close oh, wow. where the shooting took place. Um, did you see all of this going on? I mean, did you see police cars going past your house and whatever? Or, or were the, uh, when it happens, mm -hmm. uh, heard a lot of police cars going by and helicopters all over the place. Wow. wow. Yeah, I was listening to the scanner. Yeah, I, I was it. doing the, I was doing the same thing when this was going on. We were watching the news, and I said to my wife, they caught him. Yeah. And sure enough, two minutes later, they showed him yep. yeah. uh, being handcuffed. What was your take on all of this, Ray? I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, well, I just think that we need to really do something about guns in this country and stop pretending like it's not an issue. We need, we need to, I mean, at a minimum, nobody needs an assault rifle. I know that. Um, and we need to stop allowing the National Rifle Association to dictate what the majority, I think, of the people in this country want because so many hundreds of kids are killed every year. I mean, you think, I looked at after Sandy Hook, you yeah. realize there's been like 400 and something children killed in schools. We don't even know about it. We don't even hear about it by guns. I, I, mean, didn't, know, tip, I right? didn't know it was that high, but I, on the other yeah. hand... All it it's has huge. to be is a couple of kids at, at, at one school and a couple of kids at another school before that body count starts totaling up. Yeah, but there's like there's all these other things that happen. We don't, you know, two or three are killed. One is killed. We don't hear about it. Uh, someone brings a gun to, skip, to school, kills you, one. You know, we, we've been watching a beautiful sunset in one of our squares here uh, coming from Hawaii with uh, Renee and watching the sun go down there. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's what life is all about, you know, is that, that kind of a sunset. Yeah. And and yet there are 17 people who aren't going to see that kind of a sunset again. And I'm not trying to be over dramatic about this or supercilious <laughs> about it, but that's the truth. Life is so simple. We can make life a happy place so simply. And yet we have a Congress and a president and we have the NRA and they're all trying to make our lives miserable. Yes, Ray. Uh, Alex. I, I think it's time that we start to get over dramatic about it. Uh, like Martin Luther King got over dramatic about stuff. Otherwise, nothing do, nothing changes. It's, yeah, but, otherwise, it's just but, status quo. But we all we, get dramatic. I'm, I'm, you know, we've had this discussion before on this program. The last time there was a, a shooting like this, and we had a discussion about it, and and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, I don't know what it is. It, it and because it happens so often now, it's also becoming oh that happened again, you know. I mean, it, it 
at what point do we just become so numb to it that that is the reason we don't do anything about it? And then, I think and, and I think, I think, we're at. I think Jerry is right that it's really up to the young people at this point to take the banner on it because older people aren't going to. They're the ones. We don't know what to do. I, we're at a loss. We're absolutely at a loss. You know, and um, we've run out of energy. Huh? Okay. We've run out of energy. We need the young kids to get get their butts going. Yep. Yep. No question about it. You know, so I mean, uh, but but uh, what you know, so, uh, you know, the question of what we do about it is um, is is really a moot point, because, again, next week, it, the kids are going to be buried. Everybody's going to be buried and, and life is going to go back to what it was until the next incident like this. And it, they're going to get bigger and they're going to get more violent because people who do them know that they have to top the one that just happened. So, uh, yeah, and none of this is being, you know, we, 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 as I said earlier, we worry about ISIS. This has nothing to do with ISIS. We're our own ISIS. We're yes. killing ourselves. Exactly. You know, and I love this kid, you know, and they had him in court. The, the lawyer said he's very remorseful. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, that's nice. Well, I'm glad Holy he feels. I'm, 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 I'm glad he feels sorry about it. You know, Jeez. he doesn't get to play his video games anymore. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Just you know, the, and the things people say, like Ted Cruz with his thing today, and the president with his tweets that really said his speech yesterday, where he didn't mention guns once. You know. And then, uh, to, uh, you know, it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, wh what do we do about any of it? It, it, it? it gets overly frustrating. Anybody got a good joke? Uh, I... <laughs> what? Jerry, what did he do down there anyway? He said he was going to go visit down there, and he just showed up down at the police department, or what? Who are you talking about now? Uh, Trump. He uh, went, he went, Trump. To, he oh, went Trump. down yeah, He went, went down there. He, he said he was going to go visit people, and then he just he went visited, down to the he, sheriff. Yeah, he, visited, he visited people in the hospital, you know, out of sight of cameras. And then he went to the sheriff's headquarters. And, and gave him all uh, pat on the back. Yeah. yeah, you know, and no cameras. And they were probably pre-screened people that he could, you know, count on, you know, Republican yahoos. Yeah, he didn't go to that lady that screamed her head off. Exactly. And I was hoping to see that. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Oh, that woman, real, she... All right, she buried her kid today. To yeah. her kid's yeah. funeral I, I don't know, today. I, I don't know if everybody knows who he's talking about. Who Jerry is talking about. But it was this woman, and she was just one little film clip on the news, yelling and screaming at the camera. <laughs> Trump, look you at what probably, basically look, on YouTube. I can look for it right now. Yeah, maybe you can. You have the audio to it. Uh, it, 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 it. She was just screaming, you know, Trump, why didn't you do something about this? This is your fault. I mean, basically, that's what she was saying. I'm paraphrasing it. But it was it was one of those just, I mean, you could just see that. You know, I, I saw another thing today. I saw another, I saw a father who was talking about his ki kid, a girl who got killed. And he said, you know, every morning... Uh, She's running off to school, and I'm trying to get my day going, and sometimes she runs out of the house, and she doesn't even say goodbye, or I don't get a chance to say I love you. And he says, what I have to live with now is I don't remember if I told her how much I loved her before she exactly. left. Exactly, and that, uh, that got me. Yeah. That's just awful. Now I make sure every day. Yeah, he says, uh, now I would make sure every day I would say it, you know. And I made sure this morning. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, it, it, as I say, when I was growing up, school was a safe place to be. Yeah. You know, that was the place my parents didn't have to worry about me as long as they knew I was there. It was the minute school was over and I had to walk home that maybe there was a problem, right? Uh, or there could be a problem. But schools were the safest place. And now that it's not a safe place. And uh, quite frankly, Kevin... If I were you and I had a kid uh, of, of your kid's age going to school, I, I don't know if I wouldn't start homeschooling. All day long, I think about it. Yeah. It's and then you got and then I watch the news and I have to stand up and walk away from the yeah. TV because I watch the damn news too much and 
And Jerry's got a kid who's a, a teacher. I yep. mean, he's in the line of fire. And both of my 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 wife's parents were teachers, and it's just yeah. Jesus Christ. These I have a fifteen year old in high school. Yeah, how do you feel about it then? Well, I used to not think about it, but I'll tell you, I think about it all the time now. Because he goes to a high school where uh, it's like a lot of pressure. It's the number one high school in California. Kids are committing suicide all the time because there's pressure. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, one of them could go berserk and just blow everybody away. And you're up in the North Bay, Ray? Uh, Palo Alto. Gun High oh, School. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I found the video. Uh, you found the video. Do you have the audio? Could you just play the audio? I'll see if you can hear it. Okay. i got to put my speakers on. Yeah. Don't wake my wife up. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, Alex, wait, 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 hold, on, hold on a second. Here she goes. How do they get you security? What security is there? There's no metal detectors. The gunman is crazy. Oh, my God. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands. Put metal detectors at every entrance to the schools. What can you do? You can do a lot. This is not fair to our family that our children go to school and have to get killed. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> that, that, that is pain. I just spent the last two hours. Uh. That, I guess you, you yeah. got the gist. Oh, they, you didn't even have to show it. Uh, uh, it, it is, uh, th that is absolute pain. You know, that's a woman who is just feeling the brunt of pain and, and it feels fr as frustrated as anybody does about, you know, now she can't. It, it's a question she probably asks herself, well, there's nothing I can do about it now, you know. But we uh, we have to start doing something about it, and and I just don't think we are. I mean, uh, let let's go around the panel here, uh, Rob. Do you, do you think that there's any reality in us putting an end to this drug, this uh, going uh, uh, after this problem? What, what no, you, not unless the uh, not unless the climate changes in government. No, not unless it changes. How about you, Mark? You you were meant. Why were you grimacing there? Uh, it's just painful to hear this. It, 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 uh, my heart breaks when I hear shit like this, especially now. And what's what more is it going to take? What more? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vernon? The only thing I can see is changing, changing the, the, the makeup of Congress. That's the only thing that's that's going to change any of this. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get money out of politics? You got to uh, change the uh, Constitution of the United States so that people are people and corporations are not people, and money is not free speech. Well, the only way to do that now, because of the Supreme Court, is to amend the Constitution, and that starts in Congress, and that isn't going to happen with the current Congress. Um, um, uh, Jeff, any comment? What do, you, what do you think we can do about it? Is there a reality to saying let's do something about it? Well, I think Connecticut has certain made some small things. But that's a small state. And it used to be a manufacturing state. And guess what they used to manufacture? Guns. Guns. No, oh, yeah. And all that gun manufacture is no longer in Connecticut, that's for sure. Jerry? <laughs> well, we could do a few simple things just to start. For example, this lunatic went in at age 18 and bought an assault rifle, but he couldn't go next door and buy a six-pack. <laughs> and it makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah. <clears throat> he could, and he couldn't buy a pistol. No, 21 for a pistol. 
Ray? He didn't need a pistol, obviously. <laughs> Ray, is it true the school that you're talking about that your kid goes to is called Gun High School? Yes. Wow. Oh, <laughs> G-U-N-N. It's named after a guy. His name was Gun, and he was a person who donated a lot of money to Palo Alto a long time ago. Yeah, well, he was a rich guy. I, yeah, well, I, hopefully nothing will happen there because it would be too ironic. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you what do you think? I mean, is there a reality to us being able to do something about this? And and how far do we go? Do we just ban guns? I mean, they they do it in England. You know, they do it in a lot of civilized countries in the world. We just have such a love for guns. I mean, for this this cold steel. I mean, it's amazing. Is there a reality? Our our love for guns it, uh we, we are addicted to our guns in this country. We, we believe it's a right to have guns. In Australia, they had one school shooting, and right after that, they out they made a law where you can't have guns, and they haven't had one since, I don't believe. Yeah. Um, we, we can't defend ourselves against our government with pistols and these little assault rifles anyway, so the whole thing is ridiculous about the militia. Yeah. You know, Alex, you know, San Carlos up the bay, I was curious about this rifle the kid had I could have gone in this afternoon if I got there before seven when they closed and bought that AR-15 and the bullets and had them in my house right now. Really? I mean, that's absurd. That's yeah. just absurd. Yeah. This is a this is a gun that's made for warfare. Yeah. It's crazy. It's just crazy. They, I read something today where if 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 the um, if the Republicans or whatever just won't allow uh, guns to be outlawed. There is a case to be made for just doing like in airports with metal detectors and everything at all the schools. And uh, apparently we could do it. Uh, I think that's ridiculous, but I'd rather do that than seeing all these kids killed all the time. Why don't we make bullets illegal? Yeah, or rubber. <laughs> no, because <laughs> rubber. The, the, the Supreme Court, uh, the uh, uh, Constitution doesn't give us the right. It gives us the right to bear arms, maybe, if you want to argue that. But it doesn't give us the right to have bullets. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, uh, Kevin, what, what's your attitude about this? Are we, is it realistic to say let's do something about it and ho hope and pray that it's going to get done? I don't know. I think you know there's so many freaking guns out there right now. Yeah. Getting rid of them is going to be next to impossible. Uh, I say that there's still. Uh, some reality to if we get rid of guns, only the bad guys will have guns. I still say that there's some reality to that. I think it should be a pain in the fucking ass to get guns. If you're going to get them, if you're going to go buy one, it should take forever to get one. And you should be checked out forever to get one. <clears throat> you know, if you're going to if you're going to go buy one, you don't go down to the store, pick it up and get one. I think you should be checked out. It should take you two, three months to get one. I don't care if you're going hunting next week. Plan it out. Uh, let, them, let them do a background check on you for two or three months. Figure out where you've been, what you've been doing. This guy, you know, he was, he was kicked out of school. That should be a, a, something they check out. Why were you kicked out of school? You know, what's your problem? Little shit like that should be checked out. Renee Collins, you know, make, it, Renee, make it make it difficult. Renee Collins, who who basically has her camera pointed at a sunset, has been been on the chat here, and she says the NRA should pay for the protection of all schools within the USA. Yeah, I was going there too. It's all yeah, on the I'm NRA. Not make them, if they're going to be so uh, free with their money with the Congress and everybody else, have them pitch yeah. in for you know security at the schools. Uh, pay for the metal detectors and have Mr. Trump have his finely inked pen executive order that shit. Renee also yeah, says yeah. America's love for guns is stronger than your children's life. Yep. I, I, you, can't I compare this, you can't compare this country to other countries when it comes to guns, just like you can't compare this country to other countries when it comes to health care. Because those <laughs> right. countries also have health care, and we can't even settle on that. And you know, here, here, here's a statement from Tom Yamaguchi, and then I'm going to get to Bob Eberth for his thoughts on this. He says, really good program tonight. I'd like to see more like this. I don't want to see more like this. If, we, if I have to see more like this, it means there are going to be more kids killed, 
and there's going to be more promiscuous use of guns. I hope we never have to do a show like this again. But we will. We will. Don't worry about it. Bob Eberth. Yeah, uh, it turns out that Walmart is the biggest seller of guns in the country. You can walk into any Walmart and buy a gun, but you can't buy a CD at Walmart that has dirty words in it. <laughs> that's, that's my point. Very good, Bob. Too and now, fucking easy. That's, and, just, that's just crazy. And as oh we've been God. sitting here, the sun has almost crested below the horizon in Hawaii, and it's been a beautiful thing to watch, kind of a somewhat calming influence. Uh, Renee, can you hear us or can you talk to us? Or are you just able to chat and that's it? Because uh, I'd love to have your thoughts on this. But I guess I'm not going to get them, but I'm getting that sunset. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? It's amazing. Yeah. Is, it, is there a way to make it bigger on your screen? I can, that, I can uh, do it, but the problem is it then puts all you people on the bottom so the crest oh. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the sunset wouldn't show up large. That's oh, the problem. Otherwise, I, I, that would have been a very calming influence tonight. But uh, it's just that somehow that sunset is extraordinary because there were a lot of clouds in the sky as well. So the light was playing off of them if, and so on. If you click on the image, it'll enlarge to full screen. Uh, at, okay. On your computer. Yeah, yeah. if you double yeah. click if it. If I double click yeah. it here, it will do it too. But the trouble is that all, the, all of you will be along the bottom. And that but will, any one of yeah. you can click on it, and it'll yep. enlarge on your screen. Yeah. Oh, not mine. Maybe it's because I have Windows. All right. Well, Windows probably should do it. I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. You're yeah, right. It works. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, cool. uh, you know, I mean, this is uh, again, this is a, a discussion <laughs> that I'm I'm glad we've had. As she says, I can. However, I'm on another computer. Says Renee. Okay, well, Renee, those were good things you said anyway, so I'm glad I, I repeated them here. Uh, you know, this, is, uh, this has been an interesting program, uh, and I don't know, I don't know, we've got about two minutes left, and I don't know where to bring it to an end, except to say that we got to do something. You know, we just, it, this is it. This is, this is clutch time. Uh, and, but uh, I can't believe that there aren't some good Republicans out there who will help pass a law, you know? That there are people out there. I can't believe there are Republicans out there really buying this shit. Uh, and and it, it isn't a matter of Republican. It isn't a matter of right or left. It isn't a matter of your constituency and whether they're going to vote for you or not. If they're dead, they're not going to be able to vote for you. So, you know, something's got to be done here. We've got to we've got to suddenly you know say to ourselves it's time it's time to take this bull by the horns, and and deal with it, uh, but we're not and and that's uh, that's a major problem. This Anybody got so any kid centric? Huh? What this world this world is so kid centric? Yeah, really. We 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 cherish our kids. If this is the perfect fuel to start this. But it's not as important as money and politics. That's where the low line is drawn. Yeah. That's, That's the horrible. Part. That's the unfortunate part. Anybody have a last word here that they want to say at all? Okay. Well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, uh, to begin with, first of all, Vernon Nunn, thank you for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Can you do an SOS or is that illegal? Help us, please. Help us. Mark, thank you for calling tonight. Uh, you're always a, a blessing to this program. Jeff Stein, you as well. Jerry, please call more. I really, you made this show tonight because you were, you oh, were I, right. I appreciate that. And I'm glad I finally called. Uh, Ray, Ray Renati, always good to hear from you. Thanks, And, and Ray Alfano, what would I do without you? Rob. Uh, Rob. <laughs> what I said to Roy? <laughs> You know what it was? I said Ray. Ray. I said I said Ray, and then I went to Rob, and I mixed the two together and said Roy. Rob, what would I do without you? You are Rob, right? Uh, Renee, thanks for That's the nice. thanks to you and the good Lord for the sunset. She's waving goodbye. Uh, Bob Ebert, always good to hear from you, and of course Kevin. I always feel like Santa's in the house. Okay, everybody, a big wave goodbye so they can all see it. 
and thanks for joining the Citizens Panel tonight. That's it for our Citizens Panel uh, for tonight and for this week. Boy, we ended with a, this was a good one tonight, and I thank all these people for having helped us with it. Uh, the, the Citizens Panel was extraordinary, okay? Just absolutely extraordinary. Next, it's the intersection with Jack and Amy, and right after that, uh, at uh, 1 o'clock, uh, it's uh, Connections uh, from Florida. And then, yeah, then uh, uh, on uh, Tuesday, we'll be back again. But before we do it, 9.30, it's Damien with The Exchange. And then I'm on at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>